Oh, Masechet Tani, Daf Kafalef, Kafalef. We're actually Kavbet today, but we're just going to start on Kafalef on the Bet on the bottom. We were talking about, if you remember, that there was the Yeshiva Shlomala used to come and say Shalom to Abba Umana every single day, and for Abaye it was only going to be every Erev Shabbat, and for Rava it was Erev Kippur. So Abaye was upset, and then we spoke about who this Abba Umana was. That basically he used to actually do all these things, right? He used to do it with Sniut. If you remember, he used to put the men and women separately in the waiting room in order to, to bloodlet. Then he used to put on the women a clothing in order that when he would actually take out the blood, he would actually take it out with Sniut. He didn't have to actually look at their body. Then afterwards, he used to come and he used to put a place designated for money. Whoever had money would pay him. Whoever didn't have money would not pay him because they didn't have money. Then afterwards, when a rabbi would come, he would actually come and not only not charge him, he would give him money. And then he would send them off. So that was who Abba Umana was. So the Gemara says, Yom Achad, one day, Abayi sent a zug of rabbis to check him out. So he gave them to eat, to drink, everything. And then what happened? They came and they took, right? They went to sleep. So they took their things that they were sleeping on. In the morning, what did they do? They took it. So they stole their beddings, right? So what happened? Right? And then they went out to the shuk. And they went and they found him. They told them to Abba, to Abba Umano, right? They told him, How much is it worth if you want to buy it from us? This is a price. They said, Maybe it's worth more. He says, That's what I bought it for. They told him, It's yours. Take it. It's yours. Take it. They told him, They said, What did you suspect us of? Right? At the end of the day, they stole their beddings from the guy, and then they're going to sell it to him in the shuk. So, what exactly are they suspecting him of? He said, I said for sure that they had Pidyon Shivuim. You know what Pidyon Shivuim is, right? Rescuing of the of the captivities, of the prisoners. And they were embarrassed to tell me. So Amrulay, they went and they said, Right? So you come okay. So they went and they said, now he's going to take it back. Right? Why? Because we only did it to give do an isayon to you. They were testing him out. They were testing his waters. So he went and he said, do you know, I can't take it back. Why can't I take it back? Because from that moment, I already put it for tzedakah. So therefore, I don't want to take it back. You understand? That means this is mamash a musad eskel. People are puzzled. One more time. One more time. Abba Umana was a very big tzaddik. He was a blood letter. He was like a doctor. Every single day, he used to get shalom from the yeshiva shel mala. That, that which Abaye only got every Erev Shabbat. Wow. And Rava only got Erev Kippur. And this guy is getting it every mm -hmm. single day. So Abaye was upset. He was thinking to himself, I, well, what's going on here? Why does this guy get such a merit? And I'm only getting it every Erev Shabbat. He gets special treatment. You understand? Every single day, Yeshiva Shalmana, they come and they speak to him. Other people, it's once a year. You understand? So obviously, right, he realized that Abba was a tzaddik. He wasn't just playing on his phone during the shoe. You know, he was a big tzaddik. So what happened? What happened was, is that we went and we tested out. We went and we tested out. They wanted to test who was this Abba Mare. So he sent Talmidim there. So we already said the big greatnesses that he had. He was Shomer al Tzniut, right? That he went and he also, that when, even when he used to bloodlet from the women, he had a special dress that he used to put on. And he only used to bloodlet, but he didn't see any of their skin. Mamash, the Tzniut that he had in order to make sure that everything was done properly. He had them separately waiting. Men and the women, so that way they wouldn't mix and they wouldn't mingle. He was a bloodletter, right? Take up blood. To bloodlet means to take up blood. Okay? In the olden days, they used to think it was a very big refla, so they used to take up blood a lot. Okay? So what happens now was, is that he went and he sent messengers to test him. When he went to send the message, he gave them to, to drink, to eat, to sleep. The next morning, they come, they pack their bags. With their bags, right, you know the famous joke, right? The Israelis go to the to a hotel. And all of a sudden, they empty out the hotel. You go back inside the room. You don't see the light bulbs. You don't see the, the faucets. You don't see the, the blankets, the pillows, the towels. Right? They come in with one luggage. They come out with four. Right? The same. So all of a sudden, they come. Boom. 
they take with them the beddings and they left with them. So all of a sudden they see him in the shuk and they ask him, how much, how much do you, how much do you want to buy this for? So he comes and he says a price. He said, maybe it's worth more. So that's how much I bought it for. <laughs> it's not worth more. That's how much I bought it for. So they went and said, okay, fine, it's yours. Take it. So then they asked him, what did you suspect us? So listen, I thought you guys had to do Pidyon Shruim and you were embarrassed to tell me about the res rescuing somebody. So you just took about, so he said, okay, you're right, 100%, but no, the truth is we didn't do it for that. We did it just to test you. You want to see who you were, take it back. He says, no, the second that you did that, I already said it was going to Tzedakah. I can't take it back. Wow. Yeah, I can't take it back. So, okay, fine, let's continue. So Amrulay, they told us, so have a kachal shadate de rava mishundave. Now, we understood why Abaye was, again, he was jealous or Abaye was like, you know, feeling bad of what happened with, right, Abba Umana. Now we're going to see a Rava to Abaye. Rava used to get the Shalom, the Yishiva Shalmala, Erev Kippur. You know, some people, they only come back and they do Teshuvah by Elul time. By, you know, by other, no, every single Erev Shabbat, they're here. Yeah, every Erev Shabbat. So what happens? Kachal shadate de Rava, Mishunda Abaye. Amrulay, they said, it's It's enough for you that because of your merit, all the people they have, the entire city is on your merit because of you. That's why it's enough. Don't worry about it. Right? They went and they told Rava, don't worry about it. The entire city is because of your zechut. Now you're worried because you're not getting shalom from the Mentif to the Rakia, only one set of Kippur. Fine. Rabbi Beroka Choza'a, Avashiach Veshuka Deve Lefet. So Rabbi Baroka Choza'a, that's from the place of Choza, right? He was found, he was common in the Shuk of Belefet. So it says, Aveshkiach Eliyahu Gabel. Yonavi used to come to him all the time. Amale, and he used to tell him, Ika Shuka Bar Almadate. So imagine this is a very famous story. He comes and he tells Eliyahu Navi, is there anybody in the Shuk that has Olam Abba? You know what a Shuk is? Yeah, a marketplace. Imagine how many thousands of people there. He says, is there anybody in the Shuk that has Olam Abba? Yeah. So what Amale, he says, Lo. No. So all of the people that are there in the shuk, nobody has ulam abba. Yeah, all of a sudden, adavachi vehachi, right? All of a sudden, during this time, chazal ugabra dehava sayim misane uchme. He saw a person that was wearing black uh, shoes, right? Which is not like the minhag of Bani Yisrael. Velor hamichuta detchelta beglime. He also didn't put on tzitzit, right? So mama, she looked like a goy. Amalei comes and he tells him, hi, out of all the things that you would have thought about, all of a sudden he comes and he says, this is a person that's Olam Abba. He doesn't have tzitzit and he doesn't even have the Jewish clothing because he didn't have the shoes. The problem. So what happened? He runs after him. Amale, he comes and he tells him, what do you do exactly? Now, usually nowadays, this I learned once from Darren Enchoy. Right, he once taught us this as Musad. He came and he gave a shiur in Gibraltar, and he brought, I think, it was a brisk rav, and I think it was in the name of the Chavetz Chaim. That there, there was a student that once, after many years of going from the yeshiva, he asked him, "No, how's everything? This and that." He starts to speak to him. He says, "What do you do?" So he went and he says, "I'm an accountant." Okay, so what do you do? Well, I count money. I, you know, I, uh, budgets. I count other people's money. You know, it's it's an accountant. No, no, but what do you do? And the guy went and he didn't realize. He said, no, no, no. I didn't ask you what do you do for a living. What do you do? What are your actions? What are you? This is what he says. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> what are your actions? What are you? So he comes and he says, <laughs> he comes and he answers. <laughs> Go and come back tomorrow. Right? I don't have time to answer you now. Come back tomorrow. Yeah, I'll answer you tomorrow. <laughs> the next day, he comes and he asks the same question. <laughs> what do you do? Amalei, he tells him, Zadkuna Anna. I am the Shomer on the Beta Surim. I'm the guard of the prison. I'm the prison guard. Yeah. And I keep the inmates, the cellmates, I keep them separate. Men one side, women the other side. I keep them separate. So they don't do a virot there. Urmina Puriya Benhane Lehane. And I place right the beds in between them. I place my bed in between them. I put my bed in between the cellmates in order that they don't do isurim. So the guard, right, which this we, we've never heard of. Not only is the guard the guard, 
the guard sleeps with them in the same place, right? And he put his bed in between the two cellmates. Nowadays, a guard would sleep in the same place. He would be dead yeah. <laughs> within a few hours. You understand? No, he would sleep in between. Yeah, in order that he don't do a surim. When I see a Jewish girl that the Goyim are placing their eyes on her, I put myself in Sakana to save her. There was once an Arame or a Sabayas, a girl that she was engaged, Jewish girl that was by us. That the Goyim, they put their eyes on her. Shakli Durdaya de Hamra. I took the shmarim of wine, right? Adumin kedam, which is red, like blood. The shaday la beshipulan. I threw it on her clothing. The amar the amri bistenahi, and then I said, Ah, she's an ida. You understood? What basically what he did was is he planted. He sabbat, He went and he threw blood that looked like a liquid that looked like blood. What? No, but even goyim would understand that it's disgusting. It's they didn't want to do that. Course. Of course. In the middle of an Ida, they, they were, Ugh. you know, it's disgusting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, nowadays, the uh, Hamorim, yeah. right? Uh, they, 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 but the, the concept was, Mamash, it was disgusting. It was repulsive. What, you're going to come, uh, she's uh, flowing blood, you're going to, they, they went away. Amale, they went and they said, mm-hmm. He said, why don't you have tzitzit? Where's your tzitzit? And you're also putting black shoes. Amalei says, I come in and out with the green and I don't do it. That's why they don't know that I'm Jewish. I purposely do it because I'm undercover. I don't want them to know that I'm Jewish. Because when the green they come and they make a gezera, I'm the first one that I tell the rabbis. They come and they ask for mercy. Um, and they come and they know the Gizerot. Meaning he's the one. He has to be like that. He has to be undercover. So says the Gemara. Fine. So look what a tzaddik. This guy is doing a mamash. Everything in the Shem Shemayim. So that way he's able to annul the decrees. He's able to say them. And by the way, did you realize every story that we talked about Kedusha until now was Kedusha because of the separation of men and women. Yeah, not see through Mechitzot. Yeah, mamash, separation. Yeah, you have to be completely separate. So he says, So he says, one second, why is it that I went and I told you, what do you do? And you told me, Zilaya, go and come back tomorrow. Come back tomorrow. He went and he told them, In that moment, they made a gezera. The first thing that I need to do is go tell the rabbis right away. They have to ask for mercy. So right away, before doing anything, I didn't even have time to talk. Come back tomorrow. Boom. He went running. He had to go and he had to tell the rabbis in order to ask for mercy, in order that he should come and null the decree. Now, while he's speaking to these people, there were another two people that came to the shul. And he went and he said, So now, Eliyahu Navi, remember, this, um, what's it called? Rabbi Broka was trying to find out who gets Ulam Abba. And he sees a guy that in his wildest dreams would not get Ulam Abba, and he gets Ulam Abba. And everybody else in the shul does not get Ulam Abba. Now, in the middle, we just found out why, right? What a big tzaddik this guy is, even though, you know, we think that, you know, we didn't even realize the guy is Jewish, but we know very well that he's very Jewish. So what happens was, is now all of a sudden, Eliyahu Navi comes and he says, there's another two people that are on these people. Amale Hanach Nam, these two people also get on Why? Azal Gabayu, Amale, we told him, Mayu Vadayahu, what do you guys do? Amrule, they told him, in Shebe We are, we are jokers. You know, a lot of those people. Yeah, they're jokers. Uh, what does that mean? Me we come and people are all sad and we make them jolly. We make them happy. So that's what we do. That's what we do. Inami, right? Or, right? When we see two, see two people, right? That they come and they're fighting between each other. I make peace between them. You understand? Mamash, on the moment. Two people are fighting, right? I get on the WhatsApp or whatever it is. And I come, I send them texts, I say, ah, we start making peace. Amen. Yeah, okay, amen. So says the Mishnah, now we're on the two dots. Okay, so we finish with the Olam Abba. Yeah, these are people that get Olam Abba. Says the Mishnah, Al elu matriim bechol makom. Right, on these people, right, we're going to come and we are going to be matriya, we're going to do shofarot, 
in every single place. Yeah, says the, the Gimara. Tanu Rabana, we learned in the bright, Talelu Matrimi Chol Makom. On these things, we're going to right away do throughout, right, in every single place. Right, Tanu Rabana, Al Elu Matrimi Chol Makom, Ashidafon, right, which is Ashidafon, Yerakon, Arabech, Asil, Chayara'a, whether it's going to be, if you remember, the water coming up, whether it's going to become that it's going to change all the different, uh, the, um, the vegetables and things of like that, on the locusts, on the different types of locusts, on wild animals. Rabbi Kiva says, on any amount. Okay? And even if you find just even the kanaf, you're already going to do it. Because you saw one, it's already enough. You don't have to start waiting until there's a swarm of, I don't know. No, no, no. One is already enough. Wild animals. Right? When it says over here, that we're all of a sudden going to come and wild animals are going to be found. So now we're going to come and we're going to do this. It says, What does it mean? During the time when the chaya is not to eat, which means that we have to understand that it was a gizram in the shemaim. Then matvin aleha. But if it's not sent from the heavens, which means that it's just like a normal thing. We're not going to do anything. What is the difference between mishulach and mishulach? Niret ba'id, if you see it in the city, it comes from Hashem. Why? Because it's not normal for a wild animal to be strolling around in the city. So the fact that it's in the city, so that comes from HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Basadev, it's going to be in the fields. It's, that's, not, that's normal. Bayom, if it's during the day, it comes from Hashem. Right? Why? Because usually it does not come during the daytime. But Laila, enom shulacha. Then, right, it's not from Hashem. Because what does it mean? It's not from, meaning that no, it's not from Hashem. I think it's from Hashem. The covenant is, do you see the sign from Hashem that if it's natural or not natural? Okay, for that to happen. If it sees two people and it starts running after them, that's Meshulachat. If it's going to be hiding from them, then that's that's uh, not from Hashem because it's normal that they're going to hide from two human beings. And what if it grabs two human beings, but it only ate one of them? So that's Meshulachat. That's from Hashem because that's not normal. But if it ate both of them, that's normal. All right? Eno Meshulachat. It goes up to the roof and it took a child from its crib. So that's Mishulachat. That comes from Hashem 100%. Because you see that, uh, you know, that just happens. Right? So says the Gimara. Haguvakashia. By the way, that just happened this past week. Yeah? Where a child uh, a child was grabbed. I don't remember where. Somebody told me that it just Mira Shaman. That a child was grabbed by, uh, I don't know if it's like from one of the leopards. I don't know what it was exactly. And it was grabbed away. And the mother had to go running after it for a mile until, and she had to start fighting with it until it was able. But they were both uh, admitted to the hospital and everything. But they were both alive after. Yeah. So says the Gemara. Hagufa Kashia. That in itself is a question. Amar, you just said Nira Tabeir. It comes from Hashem. There's no difference whether it's the daytime or during the nighttime. And then you tell me that if it's during the daytime, it comes from Hashem. It's nighttime. It's not comes from Hashem. So explain to yourself. Says the Gemara. La Kashia. It's not a question. It all depends. If it's in the city, by Yom, then it comes from Hashem. If it's in the city in the nighttime, it's not coming from Hashem because it could come to the city during the nighttime mm-hmm. because it's nighttime. So it'll come or Basade during the, in the field, even if it's going to be during the day, that, that's natural because it comes to the fields. It won't come to the city, but it will come to the fields even during the day. If it saw two human beings and it runs after that, it comes from Hashem. Ha'omed, but if it stops and it stays in its place, it doesn't come from Hashem, but it's natural. Then it said, only if it hides itself from them, then it comes from Hashem. Ha'omed, but if it's going to stop where it is, so then that comes from, that's Mishulachat. So it says, it's not a question. It all depends whether the field is beside a swamp or not. Because basically when the Chaya is there, it doesn't run away because it's not, it's something normal because since it's close to where it grows up, so it feels a certain from itself. So it doesn't have to run away, right? But in the Sadeh, which is not close to a swamp, it has to run away. Right? That's what we're saying. That means it's not just that it stands. It, it should run away. The fact that it's just standing still and it doesn't care. So therefore, you know, that, that's coming from Hashem. Okay? So if it stands... <clears throat> If it grabs two people like once, and only one of them, so that's Meshulachat. If it ate both of them, it's not Meshulachat. So says the Gemara, I thought you said, right, even if it runs after both of them, it's already Meshulachat. It comes from Hashem. Because the fact that it's running after two people and not running away from them, that in itself already comes from Hashem. It's a sign. So Amar Papa, Papa says, Again, we're talking about the Nagam itself. 
So since it's in the Agam, which is basically that's where the swamp area, where that's where it lives, right? So therefore, it's not considered Mishulacha, the fact that it's running after them, but basically, if he's going to grab both, but only one of them, that in itself is, you know, doesn't make sense why he only eats one and not the other. I'm saying if he's hungry, he's going he's gonna to have a full lunch and supper. Okay? Fine. Gufa. We said in the Braita, Alta legag, if it goes up to the roof and it takes a child from its crib, so then it's Mishulacha, Pshita, obviously, saying this is so weird, you know, it's going up to the roof, getting a child. Obviously, it comes from Hashem. It's a sign. Amar Papa, Papa says, we're talking about kuchim uh, tanim of tzayadim, which basically they dig into the ground by right, far away, and therefore they do it in order to trap birds. So the bright is telling us that even though chayot regilot to go around there, right? Nevertheless, they don't go on top of a roof, right, in order to grab people. So therefore, that's why this comes from Hashem. But isn't everything? There's the gemara al on sword. Tanur Abanam, we learned to write a cherev. Which means like this. When we said that if you see swords coming by your land, that you're going to immediately come and you're going to start doing fast, we're not talking about which means that we're talking about a cherev of peace. Even a cherev of peace, which means that the tzava is coming by and they're passing by, we're still going to do it. Why? Because many times you could have that they come by with swords and with weapons, and ki'ilu of peace, and all of a sudden, it turns. It turns. So, they have to right? fast. so they have to fast. Wow, wow, wow. Because there's no greater coming through. Coming through. Yeah, a friendly army. That he came to, and right, he only went to pass through Eretz Yisrael. And the Melech Yoshiao came, and he made a mistake. He says to do the shluchim. Right, that he went and he said he made a mistake. But he shlach elav malachim lemor. He sent message. Mali v'lach melech yuda. Lo alecha atayom. It's not. I'm not coming to. You're not my enemy. Kiel bed min chamti. I'm coming to outside of your land. Velokim amal levaleni chadal lecha melokim asher imi valyeshechetecha. He says Paro didn't come to fight against Yehuda. He wanted to go by, but still Yoshiyahu melech yuda wanted to stop him. And at the end, he was killed. Meaning that Yoshiyahu melech yuda stopped him and he was killed at the end. Why? Because Kilu he just wanted to pass through the land. But then he made the wrong comment, and all of a sudden, boom, and he was killed. So you see from here, a person has to be careful. What does it mean, Maya Lokima What does it mean, the God that was with me? So now Yoshia Yudah said one second, since he's being boteach in Avodah Zarah, for sure I could kill him. Right? So what happened was they went, and that even though he only he didn't want to kill, but again, the king was killed. What does it mean, because basically what happened was, is that they went and they shot Yoshiao. They, they, they basically, they shot him with an arrow. So he went and he told his, uh, his messengers, his servants, right, take me out because I, I'm very sick. With all the chitzim, with all the arrows, they made his body like a sieve. That means they just shot. They made like holes through him. Yeah? So, why was Yoshiao punished? Right? We're on Kavet 22b, yeah? Why was he punished? Because he had to ask Yirmiyahu Anavi. And he didn't ask Yirmiyahu Anavi. Meaning before going on to war, you have to ask the rabbi. Yeah, who's the rabbi? The prophet at the time, Yirmiyahu. So he didn't. He just went out to war. You didn't ask. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. My darash, of course, he was killed. My darash, what was the darasha? It says over here, which pasuk? The lo ta'avor ba'atzichem. Says the pasuk says in the Torah, right? This is a vayikra, okay? There won't be any cherev going through your land. So my cherev, what does it mean? If you're going to tell me it's it's a war, it's right? Cherev sheena shel shalom. The active it's already written. I'm going to give you shalom. El afilu shel shalom. Even a cherev of shalom will pass through the land. That means even of us a, a, a sword of peace, no army, even a friendly army, won't go through your land. So he says, but he didn't know that his generation was not the same. I Meaning they didn't get this haftacha from Akalosh Baruch Hu, that all of a sudden no, no, no army is going to go through it. So when he was passing away, so Yirmiyahu and he came and he saw that he was moving his lips. So he went and he said, maybe he's saying something that he shouldn't be saying. So he went and he, he heard, that he was being matzdi kalav etadim. 
he was accepting upon himself the judgment. Meaning Yoshiao, not because he was suffering and he's on his deathbed, he started cursing God or saying, ah, look, he was accepting himself the judgment. Yeah, and what did he say? He said, Tzadiku kifiu mariti. He says, Akash Baruch is a tzaddik because I rebelled against his mouth. So then he went and he started saying, I sped, Ruach apenu Mashiach Hashem, right, which means that he was chaviv alenu, just like Nishma, right, the, the, that he was anointed with the anointing oil. Because remember, he was the king of Yehuda. So he was anointed with anointing oil, right, Ruach apenu Mashiach Hashem. Okay, so that's why Yemiyah Navi was crying for him because he was actually, so therefore they said, the person, even if it's going to be a cherev of shalom, you do ta'anit. We don't like to see any swords. doesn't matter whether it's a, a, from a bad army or of a peaceful army. Ma'asev yardu zekenim, right? There's a story of zekenim that they came down from Yerushalayim to, the, to their cities. Ibai lehu, they went and they asked the following question. Kim no tanur tevua, when it says that it was a full tanur, a full oven full of grain, right? And that's what we said. We're talking about, you know, the locusts and all these things. So we said that what happened? They went, and this is, sorry, this is on the sheet, the phone in Ashkelon, all the, the, the grain went off, right? If you remember that they went out the seeds and all these things. So they say, Kim no tanur tevua, odim la kim no tanur pat. Is it full of grain or is it of bread, right? What is the oven full of, grain or bread? So Tashema, we're going to try to bring a proof, right? It says, Kim no pit tanur. It says, Kim no pit tanur. It doesn't say Kim no tanur, right? Kim no pit tanur. So what does that mean? So it's Mashman, the Kavanah and Mishnah is talking about a shoot of pat and not of tevua, of bread and not of grain. We still have the question. Are we talking about like the cover of the tanu? Or Dilmar maybe kidara derifta. Maybe it's like a shurav kikarot, it's like a row of breads. Right? Because basically they're going to be stuck on the walls of the oven. Take we don't have an answer. There was another story that they made a ta'anit on people that what happened because they were the evim wolves that came and they devoured two children. So Amar Ula Mishum Rebbe Shimon Yud Sadak says Ula Nimam Rebbe Shimon Ben Yud Yes, remember whenever it says two dots, we go back to the Mishnah, right? It says Ula and the name of Shimon Ben Yud Sadak. Maaseu ba'alu zevim shnei tinokot. It was a story of two zevim. Sorry, the zevim that they came. Obviously, it was two zevim. It says zevim, right? It's plural. That they came and they ate two children. Ve'kiyum derech betarei, and they went and they took out their bodies through their excrement, right? So basically, the mash they 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 ate them and then it just came out. Uba. Yeah, yeah, right? And then what happened was So it came in front of the story, the rabbis basar, And they said that the children were tehora, tehorim from militamemet meaning that they're not, they're not considered to memet, right? However, the atzamot, the bones are is what's going to become metameh, okay? That means the bones are, are metameh because they're not considered mukalot, but the basar, the flesh is not considered tamemet, okay? Next, al elu matrim b'shabbat. Says the Gemara, al elu matrim b'shabbat. On these things, right? We're going to do um, uh, taniot and all these things even on Shabbat, right? Tanu Rabbanu, we learned to the Brayta. Echad ir shikifu anochri. Right? There was a city that, again, the goyim come and they make a siege. They go around the city, or nahar, or all of a sudden, a river is going to come and overflow the entire city, or sfinam itarefe bayam, or you have a, a boat which is being uh, Transported in the sea, not transported. It's being like thrown from one place to another place in the sea, and it's going to drown. Or an individual that's being chased after, or or because of a ruach ra, any type of demons. Matrim b'Shabbat, you're going to do a tra even on Shabbat. and on all of them, yachid could always do tanit. Okay, that means a yachid could always do tanit. Right, there's no problem, but he's not obligated to do it. He can do it, Rashai, but he's not obligated to do it. Because to do it at Sarat it's something different. When it's going to be on the Tzara of the entire, so that everyone's obligated to it. But a person could do it for himself. Rabbi Yosei Omer, or for his friend. Rabbi Yosei says, <laughs> says, do you know a person cannot be misagef at Tzmo in Ta'anit? He says, you know why? Because maybe people, he's going to need tzedakah from people, and the people are not going to have mercy on him. And then he, and he was the one that brought it on himself. Because since he started doing taniyot and everything, now he doesn't, he didn't work, right? Because he's weak. He doesn't have strength. He does tanit. All, he doesn't work. He doesn't get money. And then all of a sudden now, he needs mercy from the human beings to start eating. And he doesn't have anything. So I'm out of you. 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 I'm out of
Okay, Shimon Atini Omer, Shimon Atini says, even on David, on a, on a plague, we're going to do also on Shabbat, we're going to do the Matrim Shabbat, but the Chachamim said no. Okay, they didn't agree to it. So they're going to ask the question, Does it mean that the rabbis didn't agree with him only on Shabbat, but during the weekday they would agree with him, that you would do Matrim Aleah? Or the Pshat is that they didn't even agree with him at all, not even during the weekday, on David, right, on this thing. So we're going to learn right now, Tanya, we are going to do matrim al adeven on Shabbat. We are going to do matrim al adeven on Shabbat. We are going to do matrim al adeven on Shabbat. We are going to do matrim al adeven on Shabbat. We don't do it at whatsoever. Right? We're not going to come and we're not going to um, do it whatsoever. So you see, it's actually a machloket in this writer whether it's that they argued just on Shabbat or is it on always that they're going to come, they're going to argue. Next, part of the Mishnah, on any tzara that should not come on the tzibur, we're going to do, also do it, except for too much rain. Tzara Rabbanah, we learned on the right, that all tzara should not come on the tzibur, not on too much rain, not on too much rain. My time out to reason. Rabbi Yochanan, Rabbi Yochanan says, we never pray on something which is too good, that it should stop. We never do that. Meaning, if a person comes and he starts giving you good things, and you're not going to pray that it should stop, continue going, let it continue coming. How do we know that? Because it says, You're going to bring all the ma'asir to the bet outside. And then it says, This is very famous that we say on Roshan Kippur and all other things, which means I'm going to come and give you beracha and shefa and abundance. Abelidai. Which, what does that mean? Belidai. He says that until your siftotechem will come and start saying, Die, die. By which means, that you, it's enough, it's enough. Right, what does that mean? So he comes and he says, so we're seeing beli is milashon beliyah. So it's ad beli dai is beliyah, which means that until you're going to say uh, die. So obviously this is actually arguing because here we just said that you're never going to pray that you should say die. And here it's saying that you do say, right, that you are going to pray that it should, that you're going to say die. But it's basically like, well, who's going to give you so much? It just says die, die, die. That's it. I don't want anymore. You understand? That's it. So, so obviously it's a machlok. That's what we just said. We said it's a machlok. It's a machlok between the two different opinions. One opinion says that you never pray for something to stop if it's something good. The other opinion just said, no, that you are saying that should believe that. So Amar Rabi Bar Rav Yod says, Rami Bar Rav Yud, Uva Gola, which means in Bavel, Matrina Lea. We do right away come and start. Why? Why? Because it's a valley. It will over flood and then it's going to be dangerous. We also learned it in a Baraita, where the Baraita comes and it says, A year where there's a lot of rains, the Anshem Ishmar are going to send to the Anshem Ahmad. Anshem Ishmar are Kohanim. Anshem Ahmad are Israelim. Yeah, so Anshem Ishmar and Anshem Kohen Ma'amad, go put your mind in the Tefilot and Taniyot. Remember, the Levim were doing Shirot. Yeah. Right, but the Amanshe uh, Ma'amad were Ma'amadot, Ma'amadot are the Tfilot and Taniot. So put your place in the Tfilot and Taniot, Bachechem Shabagula, in your brothers, in your brethren in the diaspora. Sheloye Batehem Kibrehem, that their houses should not become their, their tombstones. So right? their houses shouldn't become their burial places. Shalut Rabbi Liezer, they asked Rabbi Liezer, Hecha Gesham Nardim, Mipalu Sheloye Du, until how much rain does it need to rain? And we're going to pray that it shouldn't ra- it stop raining. That a person could be on a top, on top of a, of a tzok, a, a mountain or a top of a, a cliff. That's a better word. And then his, his feet will still be in water, right? Which means it's, it's so high, the water, it's very high up. So says even one second. But Tanya, I thought we said, I thought that when it says raglav, it really means yadav. So I actually saw this tzok. Which was called Keren Ofen. That there was this Arab uh, a merchant that he was riding on a camel and he had a romach, he had a spear in his hand. Right? He used to look right like a tolat, meaning when I was looking at him from the top, it looked like a tolat, which means it looked so small and everything. It was like that. So Tanur Rabbanam also learned the writer that the What does it mean I'm going to give you the rain in its proper time? Lo shikora velo tsemea. Which means I'm not going to make that it's too much of the water, right? Too much, or it's mea, that it's too too thirsty. Ela benonit. That means you always go in the middle of the path. Not that the land is going to be too thirsty or too much. Uh, shikora means that you just gave it to drink, drink, drink. Uh, shikor, what is shikor? Somebody drunk, but you give him too much. So the same thing. Velot mea, ela benonit. Shekozman shagashimim rubim. Because if there's too much rain, 
metashteshin it aretz. It makes the land into rocks, into mud. Ve'ena motzi aperot, and then it doesn't give off good fruit. Tavar achir another explanation. Kav gimel amud alef beitam. What does it mean beitam? Bele reviot u bele shabbatot. Whenever it's a good time to rain, it's always on on lel revii and lel shabbat. On, on Friday night, it's a good time to rain. Right? Yes, obviously. After you went home. Yeah? So he says, why? Because those are the time that people are not traveling. And we're going to explain this. Next time.